Archaeopteryx is recognized as the earliest known bird. It existed during the late Jurassic period in Germany. It is one of the most scientifically interesting fossils because it gives important evidence supporting the theory that birds evolved from a dinosaur ancestor. The unusual mixture of bird-like and reptile-like features in Archaeopteryx has led scientists to the conclusion that it was a missing link between dinosaurs and birds. The first evidence of this ancient bird was found in the limestone quarries about the small town of Sonhofen, in southern Germany. A single feather was found in 1860 by quarrymen and named by scientists in 1861. Archaeopteryx is now known from seven skeletons of which five are almost complete. Some of these skeletons have fossilized impressions of feathers about the wing bones. This feature helped scientists to recognize that Archaeopteryx was a bird other features of the skeleton were more similar to those of theropods. Because all eight specimens of Archaeopteryx come from the same place, many scientists have studied the Sonhofen limestones to discover something about the habitat that it lived in. It seems to have flown through the skies above a salty lagoon that was separated from warm tropical seas by a coral reef. Unlike modern birds, which have a horny beak and no teeth, Archaeopteryx had long, slim jaws lined with sharp teeth that curved slightly backward. It was about the same size as a modern magpic, so it probably fed in a similar way and ate almost anything that was small enough to be swallowed. Insects probably made up much of its diet. But although Archaeopteryx lived close to the sea, it is unlikely that it ate fish. There are two main reasons for this. First, the lagoon was too salty for fish to live in. And second, the sea beyond the reef was too rough to allow Archaeopteryx to swoop down and catch fish swimming beneath the surface. An unusual feature of Archaeopteryx is the presence of a bird-like wishbone. In living birds, the wishbone is made from the joined-up collarbones that lie across the upper part of the chest. In birds, this is an important area for the attachment of the strong muscles that power the wings. Many theropod dinosaurs, including oviraptorids, velociraptors, allosaurs and even tyrannosaurs, also had a wishbone, which was probably used for the attachment of powerful arm muscles. Other features of Archaeopteryx, besides its teeth and wishbone, show its intermediate status between typical theropods and living birds. It has a long bony tail with feathers along the sides. The bones of its hands and feet are not fused together as they are in living birds. And its three fingers, identical to those of other theropods, are also separate, not fused as in today's birds. The theropod dinosaur Carcharodontosaurus was unlucky enough to suffer two extinctions. After its natural demise sometime in the late Cretaceous period, some fossil remains were destroyed during a bombing raid on a German museum in World War II. Luckily, recent expeditions to Northern Africa have uncovered exciting new Carcharodontosaurus material. These latest discoveries reveal that it was one of the largest land-based predators ever to walk the earth. Where the Sahara now stretches across Northern Africa, a lush, green environment once existed during late Cretaceous times. Carcharodontosaurus could be found along the banks of large rivers, searching the land for its next meal. Its skull is even longer than that of the huge North American theropod Tyrannosaurus rex. Another enormous theropod, Gigantosaurus from South America, was similar in size to Carcharodontosaurus. These two animals are closely related, and it seems that large body size evolved in a common ancestor. But large body size evolved independently in the more distantly related Tyrannosaurus. All of these animals were the top predators in their environments, able to catch the largest prey and to feast on the kills of others. They used their sheer size to scare away all other competitors for food. Thanks to the unique shape of its teeth, the remains of Carcharodontosaurus can easily be recognized, even when there are only fragments of skeleton. The telltale signs are little grooves running from the characteristic theropod serrations across the surface of the tooth. They were created from wrinkles in the tooth enamel. These wrinkles sometimes stretch across the whole tooth. A medium to large horned dinosaur, Chasmosaurus had one of the longest skulls of any known land living animal. The skull reached over six and a half feet, 2m, in length and made up about a quarter of the entire length of the animal's body. There is a great deal of variation in the arrangement of the horns and in the orientation of the frill in the different species of the plant-eating Chasmosaurus. Finds of bone beds with many Chasmosaurus individuals together suggest they lived in herds. All species of Chasmosaurus had a small nose horn and two brow horns, but the sizes of the brow horns differed considerably. Some species had very small brow horns that were no more than pointed bumps of bone above the eyes. Others had much longer brow horns, though none of these horns was as impressive as those of other horned dinosaurs, such as Triceratops. 
In all species of Chasmosaurus, the frill was a broad shield-like structure that lacked the impressive spikes seen in animals such as Styracosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus. But one or two small spines might sometimes have been present at the corners of the frill. The advanced horned dinosaurs, called ceratopsids, can be divided into two groups. Chasmosaurs, such as Chasmosaurus, had very long frills, whereas Centrosaurs, such as Pachyrhinosaurus, had much shorter frills. Although all ceratopsians are often referred to collectively as horned dinosaurs, only the ceratopsids possessed large horns. All scientists agree that the hind legs of horned dinosaurs were held straight beneath the body, like pillars. But there has been some debate about the way in which the front legs were held. Some scientists think that the legs were held out sideways, in a similar fashion to that seen in lizards and crocodiles. However, if this were the case, it is difficult to see how Chasmosaurus and its relatives could have supported the massive weight of their huge, horned heads. It seems more likely that the front limbs were also held straight beneath the body, as this would have made carrying the head much easier. Some evidence from trackways supports this view. If the front legs were held out to the sides, the trackways of horned dinosaurs would be very wide. However, the trackways are actually very narrow, showing that the limbs must have been held directly underneath the body. The fossil remains of ceratopsians are known only from Central Asia and North America. The most primitive ceratopsians, such as Cetacosaurus, lived in China and Mongolia during the early Cretaceous period, suggesting that the group first evolved in Asia. Chasmosaurus has been found in large bone beds in Alberta, Canada. Some bone beds contain the remains from tens, or even hundreds, of individuals of Chasmosaurus. Bone beds are formed extremely rapidly by a single catastrophic event, such as the flooding of a river or the eruption of a volcano. Study of the Chasmosaurus bone beds has shown that they were formed during a flood, suggesting that an entire herd of these animals perished as they tried to swim across a river. Similar events are known to occur today. As herds of wildebeest migrate across the African plains, they often have to cross large rivers. If the river is in flood, many wildebeests drown and are washed downriver, where their bodies accumulate in large piles. The Chasmosaurus bone beds may be telling us that this horned dinosaur also migrated over large distances, but this idea is difficult to prove. This was a two-legged, meat-eating dinosaur from the late Jurassic period of North America. It is marked by a single small horn situated on the top of its snout, just behind the nostrils. Fossils of Ceratosaurus are sometimes found alongside those of another large theropod dinosaur, Allosaurus. But, although these two animals share the same environment, Ceratosaurus was a much rarer inhabitant of this late Jurassic North American landscape. It is unusual to find two large predatory animals in the same environment. Such a discovery suggests that each animal had a slightly different feeding strategy. Whereas Allosaurus could be up to 45 feet, 14 meters, in length, Ceratosaurus reached no more than 20 feet, 6 meters. So perhaps Allosaurus tackled larger prey, such as Stegosaurus and the sauropods Diplodocus and Apatosaurus. The abundance of Allosaurus fossils also suggests that this animal may have been a group hunter. In contrast, Ceratosaurus could prey upon small ornithopods and other smaller reptiles. Ceratosaurus fossils are rather rare, suggesting that it was a lone hunter. The body of Ceratosaurus was supported by large pillar-like hind limbs. Its forelimbs, although shorter, were robust and strong. They would have been useful tools during prey capture and feeding. The head is large, and balanced by a long, heavy tail. But the skull is not particularly strong. And the neck is quite short and stout for a meat-eating theropod. Although the skeletons of Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus look quite similar, Ceratosaurus has four fingers on its hand, as opposed to the three fingers of Allosaurus. This feature, among others, shows that these two dinosaurs are not particularly closely related. Camarasaurus was the most abundant dinosaur in North America during the late Jurassic period. Herds of these animals roam through the open conifer forests that cover the western United States at this time. Although Camarasaurus reached a length of about 66 feet, 20 meters, it is actually one of the smaller sauropod dinosaurs. 
Its relatively small size and abundance probably made it a target for large predators such as Allosaurus. Most species of sauropod dinosaur are known from only one or two skeletons, and even these may be damaged or have many missing parts. The skulls of these huge animals are particularly rare, and only a few complete skulls have ever been discovered. Camarasaurus, however, is one of the few sauropods for which scientists have a large number of good skeletons and several skulls in good condition. As a result, scientists know a great deal about the anatomy of Camarasaurus. Skeletons from all age groups are known, from babies up to fully grown adults. It used to be thought that sauropods did not chew their food very much, but just used their teeth to nip off leaves and fruits before allowing their very long guts to do all of the hard work involved in digestion. However, detailed studies on the teeth and jaws have shown that Camarasaurus could have chewed its food at least somewhat. The teeth are broad and robust, and they locked together as the jaws were closed. This allowed Camarasaurus to make short work of even the toughest plants. To many, it seems remarkable that the small heads of sauropods could have eaten enough food to maintain their size and growth. The neck of Camarasaurus is relatively short by sauropod standards. It is made up of 12 individual neck bones, or vertebrae. These were connected to each other by large ball and socket joints at the bottom, and by smaller peg-like joints at the top. About 225 million years ago, in what is now a remote region of Argentina, South America, a new group of animals began to evolve. These were the dinosaurs, and their presence on Earth would change the face of the planet forever. Eoraptor is not the ancestor of all other dinosaurs, but it may be a very primitive dinosaur or a very close relative of dinosaurs. Its remains helped scientists to work out how dinosaurs first evolved. Eoraptor was discovered only in 1993 by a team of American and Argentinian paleontologists. It was a small, bipedal, two-legged, meat-eating animal. It possessed certain dinosaurian characteristics, such as modifications of the ankle, hind legs and hip. These features enabled dinosaurs to stand with their legs directly beneath their bodies. On the other hand, it lacked some dinosaurian features, such as the structures of the skull, wrist, hand and pelvis. Along the jaws, curved and serrated theropod-like teeth sit side by side with more leaf-shaped teeth, like those seen in the most primitive prosauropods. Hollow limb bones and elongated hands ending in curved, grasping and raking claws seem to place Eoraptor within the theropods. However, lack of a flexible hinge in the lower jaw suggests that Eoraptor is at the very bottom of the theropod family tree or perhaps not a theropod at all. The anatomy of Eoraptor suggests that dinosaurs evolved from a small, bipedal, carnivorous reptile, at some time in the Middle Triassic period. This dinosaur, a four-legged plant eater, might have been the largest armored animal of all time. The fossil bones of Saltosaurus were found in the remote Salta region of Argentina. Saltosaurus was not very big for a sauropod, being less than half the length of a patasaurus. It was an extremely rare sauropod. It had a series of small lumpy bones on its back that served it well as a suit of armor, a feature seen in only a few other sauropod species. Saltosaurus might have been rare, but it was a pretty typical sauropod dinosaur in most respects. As with all sauropods, it had a bulky body, an extremely long tail and a long neck. Saltosaurus belongs to a group of sauropods called the Titanosaurids. It was one of the very last sauropods to exist. It lived during the last few million years of the age of the dinosaurs. Almost all of the sauropods from the late Cretaceous period are Titanosaurids that were closely related to Saltosaurus. The fossil remains of many Titanosaurids are rather fragmentary, and this makes them difficult to study. Indeed, most Titanosaurid species are known from only one or two partial skeletons, and no complete skull of any Titanosaurid has ever been discovered. A few isolated skull bones tell us that the skulls of Titanosaurids were short and compact, and a little like that of Camarasaurus. All Titanosaurids had long, peg-shaped teeth, similar to those of Diplodocus. These were used to strip branches of their leaves and to nip off small fruits and pine cones. The necks of Titanosaurids were slightly broader. Because of these features, Saltosaurus and other Titanosaurids could not rear up on their hind legs to reach high into the trees like Diplodocus. But its long neck probably gave Saltosaurus a maximum reach of about 20 feet, 6 meters, above ground level still pretty hot. The armor of Saltosaurus consisted of large oval plates of bone up to about 8 inches, 20 centimeters, across the size of a small dinner plate. The surface of the plates was covered with many low ridges and pitted with numerous small holes. These plates would have been embedded in the skin and would have made Saltosaurus a very unattractive meal for a predator. Some other Titanosaurids are also known to have had armor plate. 
The biggest claws of any animal that has ever lived belonged to the mysterious Therizinosaurus. Its name refers to the gigantic, sickle-shaped claws found on the hand. The best specimen of this animal consists of an enormous arm and shoulder blade that were found in rocks in the desert of central Mongolia, the Gobi. The limited number of remains available to scientists makes deduction of this animal's behavior extremely difficult. The first claws of Therizinosaurus were discovered in 1948 by a joint Russian-Mongolian scientific expedition. Initially, they were thought to be the remains of a huge turtle. But later finds included several teeth, incomplete forelimbs, a large claw, a few fragments of hind limbs and a distinctive four-toed foot. These specimens showed that the mighty claws were actually those of a dinosaur. The question of what type of dinosaur was more difficult, and this matter was debated among scientists for many years. Eventually, in the 1990s, it was decided that Therizinosaurus was a theropod dinosaur. But it was so unlike any other theropod that it was put into a group of its own. Most theropod dinosaurs had relatively small claws on their hands, and their arms were not usually very powerful. But the claws of Therizinosaurus were about a quarter the length of the arm 2 foot 0.6 m, claws on an 8 foot 2.5 m arm. The bones of the arm are massive and show lumps and scars where extremely powerful muscles would have been attached. There appears to have been a mighty set of shoulder muscles, too. As a result, this monster must have possessed a huge pair of muscular arms. As scientists have so few bones of Therizinosaurus, its overall appearance is much more of a mystery. Some scientists think that it looked a bit like the early prosauropod dinosaur Platyosaurus, with a medium-length neck and a small head. Others think that it had shorter hind limbs and a shorter tail. These features would have caused Therizinosaurus to adopt a strange posture when standing it would have looked as if it were sitting down with its back held very straight, even though it was standing up. Many of the bones of Therizinosaurus look very similar to those of two other dinosaurs that were found in rocks of about the same geological age in the same region of Mongolia. These dinosaurs are Segnosaurus and Erlikosaurus, and all three of these animals appear to be very closely related to each other. A well-preserved skull of Erlikosaurus gives some useful clues to the lifestyle of Therizinosaurus. Erlikosaurus had a long, low, lightweight skull with a horny beak at the front of the snout. The small, leaf-shaped teeth show that this animal was mainly herbivorous, though it might have preyed occasionally on small lizards and mammals. Therizinosaurus probably had a similar diet, despite its massive claws. The claws might have been used to grasp onto plants. Plant cating is extremely rare among theropods, adding yet another unusual feature to our understanding of this bizarre animal. The late Cretaceous dinosaur Troodon appears to have led a double life. On the one hand, it was a fierce meat-eater, adequately equipped to terrorize small reptiles and mammals. On the other hand, it appears to have been a caring and attentive parent, dedicated to brooding its young. Troodon was also an intelligent dinosaur. Of all known dinosaurs, it appears to have had the biggest brain relative to body size. And a light body and long legs enabled it to run very fast. Troodon teeth were first discovered in the 1850s. But only when scientists found skull material that was more complete, many years later, did they realize they had unearthed a new and distinctive dinosaur. The teeth are very rough serrations along the back edge, used for ripping through meat. A flexible curved and flattened, with wrist and a thumb able to move independently of the other two fingers gave it a strong grasping hand. Together with its speed, these adaptations enabled Troodon to catch small fast-moving prey such as mammals and lizards. Brain size needs to be compared with body size to gain an accurate idea of an animal's intelligence. The relative brain size of Troodon suggests that it was about as intelligent as a parrot. This may not sound very bright, but parrots are extremely clever birds. In Troodon, the parts of the brain involved in sight are enlarged and well-developed. The eyes were its primary hunting tool, and enlargement of other regions of the brain would have given it more control over movement and balance when moving quickly. Its intelligence might have enabled it to coordinate its attacks with other individuals and work as a pack hunter to bring down large prey. Crocodiles and birds are the closest living relatives of dinosaurs. 
As both groups of animals lay their eggs in nests and look after these eggs to some degree, it is not surprising that dinosaurs behaved in a similar way. Fossilized Troodon nests have been found in Montana, at a famous fossil locality called Egg Mountain. Some nests contain complete eggs, and a few eggs even contain baby Troodon skeletons. Sometimes, adult Troodon bones are found along with nests, suggesting that Troodon sat on top of the eggs to keep them warm in the same way as modern birds do.